Welcome back to another episode of Tractor Talk. I'm telling you, this might be my favorite one yet. A roundup of all the news, the mods, the funny stuff out there. I don't want to waste any time, so let's get to it now. Now, first off, we have our fellow YouTuber. He's been featured on here before. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, but Ginger Billy got himself a Kubota. I'm going to let him tell you more about it right now. Oh, y'all look at here. This old Kubota tractor here. Seven series. Just got it. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, why didn't you get a John Deere? A New Holland, a massive Ferguson. Well, it's because I wanted something reliable. You see that right there? A lot of people think that's a toolbox, but it ain't. That's a mini cooler. You see, when you drive a Kubota tractor, you don't need no toolbox, because Kubotas never break down. Now John Deere's motto is nothing ruined like a deer. I'ma tell you what John Deere's motto should be. Nothing runs off with your money like a deer because them things is stupid expensive. You see this bucket right here? This bucket can carry 2,500 pounds. Easy. That's more than one of them New Holland tractors can pull. He is always a crack up. I absolutely love him. But we have one more for you today. Now this is actually, I think a construction crew uh, fixing a water main or something in the road there. I think it's a construction backhoe, but it's close enough. It's too funny not to share. Check it out. <laughs> I don't know what's better, the actual prank or the guy's reaction. It just cracks me up. I've watched it over and over. All right, so moving on, we have some tractor turbo for you today and no we're not talking johnny x this is a magnified version of that this guy is doing 60 miles an hour he is slinging dirt all over the place you got to listen to this thing purr no it roars this is amazing he is flying all around it looks dangerous as all get out but he is having a blast check it out Now for your PSA of the week. If you thought you were safe in the middle of a cornfield in a tornado, think again, check out this picture. A corn cob going right through the window of this cab tractor. I've never seen anything like it. I didn't think that that would be even possible to happen. Regardless, the proof is in the picture. Let this be your warning. And really quick, put your hands together. Let's all congratulate Drake Barefoot. He just posted that he paid off his Kubota BX. I don't know if you guys are in the same boat. Have you paid your tractor off? Are you still financing it? Either way, if you've ever made your last payment on a piece of equipment, whether it's a truck or a tractor or your house, it is such a satisfying feeling. So let's all put our hands together again. Congratulations, Drake. All right, now it's time for everybody's favorite segment of the week, the tractor mods. We have a boatload, correction. We have a bucket load of them for you today. Let's get started. The first is with Craig. He has a really cool little invention that he made, a weight bracket that can mount to the front rail, kind of where the grill guard connects on a 1025, 1023, maybe it'll fit some other models as well. Craig has gone through a couple of renditions. We had some back and forth exchanges. You know, his original version required you to remove this extra weight bracket to take your loader off and on. The new version that he has allows you to keep the front end loader on. The frame just barely, that parking stand just barely clears the weight brackets. So we want to get your feedback on this product, all right? He's thinking about gearing up, making a whole bunch of them and selling them, but are you interested, okay? You can get a pair of weights, 41 or 70 pounds that are hanging on each side of your front end loader. Leave these brackets on, take your loader on and off all the time if you need to. We all want more front end weight if we can get it, and so this is a way to do that. So you know what to do, let us know by leaving a comment down below. Next up we have Dan who has a Kubota LX2610. He had seen some of those modifications out there with the grab handles and mirror mounts. A little bit different setup on the Kubota tractors. So he took matters into his own hands and fabbed up this combination bracket that serves as a grab handle and a mirror mount. I really love it and I expect to see some copycat versions of this in the future. We were sent this video about Markley Farms who 
made their own bucket level indicator. A lot of tractors out there, this is the John Deere 3038E, applies to the entire 3E series. If you wanna see how you can handcraft your own bucket level indicator to know if your level when you're scooping up dirt or maybe you have a set of pallet forks on or a snow pusher, this is a really cool way to do it. John Deere doesn't offer this option out of the box, so check it out. Next up from Cade on his three series tractor, you gotta wait for this, a 5,000 pound lawn roller, all right? So in my mind, rolling your lawn out is all about PSI, right? It's a pressure per square inch. I think this qualifies for maybe the highest PSI that I've ever seen. You gotta check it out, a 5,000 pound, it's a drawbar style lawn roller. Of course, a three point hitch on a three series tractor isn't gonna pick that up. Hydraulically controlled to raise it and lower it. He's got a whole line of suitcase weights on there too, but this is highly impressive. Now, I don't know what the cost of this would be to manufacture. If it was anywhere near a reasonable amount, I would love to get my hands on something like this. Very cool fabrication work, Cade. I love to see it. Next up, we have Tyler and Patrick. A couple of submissions with their post hole digger carts. All right, we featured this in a recent video on one of our most hated attachments being the PhD. Is that right? Good doctorate. Wow. Tractors have a doctor. The point being that everybody hates working with these things and you will go to all sorts of extremes to make life easier when attaching, detaching, storing, mounting, whatever it is, your post hole digger. A couple of great examples here. If you're looking to improve the ride quality on your tractor, well, John Hesslink was thinking the same thing and he did a crazy cool modification on his 2025R. In fact, I gotta pull out my phone and take a look because he has such a detailed diagram of what he did, a whole huge PDF attachment. It's almost step-by-step -step instructions. It's pretty incredible. Now, John uses some Firestone products here. These almost look like they're a, oh, what is it? On the back of a truck, you can improve the suspension on there. Kind of the same concept, but really applied just to the tractor seat. Has a whole huge PDF diagram of everything that he did to get this done. DIY project. I think this might be above my DIY skills, but if you're interested, we're gonna have a link down below, check it out. Now you know I'm not a huge fan of the treadle pedal, but Ben from Nova Scotia sent over these pictures here showing his modification to that pedal configuration. He's got a size nine boot, and this setup fits a little bit better with his footprint there. I think it's a really clever way to make it work. Steven sent over these pictures showing his clever uses of a brother label printer to mark the PSI and the torque settings for his wheels and tires. Very handy to have that quick reference there. Also says he uses a motorcycle jacket with some plug-in gloves. He has it all wired in to plug right into his 12-volt convenience outlet on his tractor, which then gives him a whole heated setup all the way down to his fingertips. I absolutely love it. Right now, I gotta show you guys this. I just got in this DeWalt heated jacket. So this is it right here. I've had a chance to use this, I think, three or four times now. A lot of you guys mentioned the Milwaukee jackets. I've already got so many DeWalt batteries hanging around. I was just struggling. And when I saw on Amazon, they had this DeWalt one. What I like about it, okay, they have a lot of different models out there. This has five different heating spots, okay? So you have both arms, one on each chest and one on the back as well. A lot of them only had three out there. You just use your DeWalt battery. It actually comes with a DeWalt battery right on there. Where's it at? I think I've got it. Yep, I've got it right here. All you do is just take your battery, Put it right on there, put it in your front pocket. There's a rear pouch as well if you want to. And check it out, here's the power button right here. You just hold down, it'll light up here in a second. There we go. You can push it again. A Couple times there, a few different settings. This thing will heat you out of house and home, I tell you, it's great. I don't know how long it lasts, I haven't drained down the battery, but it's plenty long for me to get this driveway done and both neighbors. Works really well. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this model in particular is I feel like it's a touch short for me, not the end of the world. They had some longer models with only three heating sections on them. I wanted the five, I think this one's good for me. Now when we came out with our mini stump wrecker, we didn't really have this application in mind, but it just shows that you have all sorts of ways to use different attachments. Paul sent us these pictures showing how he had, you know, water pooling up, ice all over the place. He got really creative and used the stump record to find a way to, to clear a path and let this water drain away. Even in the middle of winter, you can find a way to use some of these products that are otherwise intended 
for spring summer applications maybe, but this is a cool way to do it. Thanks for sharing, Paul. All right, time for your tractor safety clip of the week. We are proud to be sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers. If you are feeling tippy on your tractor, side to side especially, adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Boro Spacers are made in America and have a lifetime warranty. Check the link out down below. I hope you are enjoying today's video. We could not do it without you guys. You send over all sorts of helpful information, a lot of fun, creative videos and pictures too. Things that make these videos enjoyable for everybody. So if you have something to share, send us an email at tractortalk at goodworkstractors.com. And if you enjoyed today's video, we'd love to have you follow along. Hit that subscribe button down below, sign up, check out the other videos that we have out there. Over 450, I think, and counting. And if you are watching this video, you may very well own a tractor. If you need a tractor attachment, give us a shot. We sell and ship all over the country. We have a great variety, all sorts of attachments to the front end loader and the three-point hitch. Visit goodworkstractors.com. Now, I recently stumbled upon a very informative channel. I'd encourage you to all spend a lot of time there. A lot of their videos are very short, but they are critical, okay? They're gonna tell you all about tractor accidents that happen, not because you wanna see all the bad stuff that happens to these people, but you wanna be aware of it when you're operating your tractor. Check out today's video on a PTO shaft incident where this gentleman happened to lose his leg, a terrible thing, but you can avoid it. There was, these pipes were in, in reverse. So I just caught them and just moved them around. When I went to stand back, I was caught. I was entangled in the power shaft. Now there was no cover on the shaft. And basically with the tail piece that was left on the overalls, it just wrapped around the shaft, stripped it. And at that stage, the leg was amputated. I'm hoping the other farmers will see it and see how easy an accident can happen. And maybe hopefully they'll see how important a PTO cover is on the drive shaft. All right, time for your tractor tool of the week. And this week we have one that's called the Ditch Box. And Gus submitted this. I believe it is his product designed and manufactured here in the USA. If you are looking to add a lot of ditches to your property, this could be the perfect tool for you. It looks pretty straightforward on how to use it. Let's watch it now. From manicured lawns to pastures, one thing is always needed, drainage ditches. Introducing the Ditch Box, a brand new solution to an old problem. The ditch box is an implement used behind a farm tractor for cutting a contoured drainage ditch without leaving any overburden or soil beside the ditch. The contoured shape of the trench created by the ditch box makes it easy to cross over with a lawnmower, and it will make the pasture easier to traverse on tractors, hay trailers, implements, you name it. The ditch box is designed to trap the soil as it is being dug and carry it to a desired location where the operator can then raise the unit to evenly expel and spread the material. Okay, time for your tractor of the week and we're doing a little bit of a, a stretch, okay? So bear with us, but it's a mini gator that Alan Dean had built for his grandkids. He posted this up on Facebook just recently. Absolutely amazing. He has some top notch fabrication skills I love the finished product. I love him taking us all the way through the build with these different pictures as well. Fantastic job. I'm sure the kids will enjoy it. All right, time for our tractor toy of the week. If you're looking for a little more inspiration besides that mini gator, you might want to check this out. A pretty clever contraption. This looks to be an electrically actuated dump trailer for this child's mini tractor. Really cool concept. It just goes to show you, these kids are never too young to help you out on the farm. He's backing that thing up and dumping it like a pro. I love to see it. Okay, so we recently took a poll from our viewers. If you want to check these out, you got to subscribe to our channel, get the notifications, go to our YouTube community tab. But I posted on there a survey that said, did your tractor cost more than the sum total of your attachments? Or did those attachments cost more than your tractor? And so we had over 1,300 votes on here with 27% saying that their tractor costs more than their attachments. 35% saying all of those attachments that they got cost more than their tractor with a whopping 39% saying, I'm too scared to know. I think we know what category those guys fall into. Now, the reason I posted that survey is because this is about tractor education. That's what my channel is all about and having a little bit of fun as well. But a lot of folks are budgeting the wrong way for their tractor purchase. You think you get the tractor and you're all set. Maybe you're saving 20, 30, 40 grand for that and that's it, right? But that's the scary part is the fact that all those attachments you get with the front end loader, the backhoe, the mower deck, the grapple, 
the hydraulics, the box blade, the snow pusher, the snow blower, whatever it is, those can all add up to be as much or more than the tractor itself. So budget accordingly, you may have to save longer than you think, but it's better to know that ahead of time rather than be disappointed once you get to your dealer. I stumbled across a question posted by Chief850 on Green Tractor Talk recently. Now Chief is asking what people's thoughts are on a three-point log splitter on a 1025R. You could use this to be any subcompact or even a small compact tractor. Now there were a lot of responses in that forum thread and the general theme and what I typically tell folks as well is that if you want to run a hydraulically driven three-point log splitter on your tractor, on a small tractor with a small hydraulic system, you can technically use it if you have the right hydraulic setup, but it's going to operate very slowly. So I did a little digging and found an example of a three-point hydraulically driven log splitter on a subcompact tractor. So watch that video and see how slow the cycle time is. That's one of the problems we pointed out recently on small tractors is their hydraulic systems are severely undersized or at least so it seems and that's going to result in these really slow cycle times like what you see on this log splitter however i got to point this out too at the same time when i was researching this i came across this homemade log splitter which has kind of the screw drive splitter on it and it looks a little hairy all right i'm not gonna lie it's a little dangerous looking but it's a very clever way a very handy way to split some wood i can see it coming in handy now you do see variations of this screw type splitter on larger pieces of equipment skid steers as well a little bit different take on it. I like the ingenuity. So it's time for your small channel spotlight. Today we are gonna talk about a tale of three cabins. Now Tom over there has over 150 videos, primarily with his John Deere 1025R, all sorts of different projects, but he does have actually three different cabins that he's maintaining. Has some of those projects there going on too, along with a lot of other fun stuff. Really high quality videos. I love to watch them whenever he hasn't come out. So show him some love. A Tale of Three Cabins. Hit the subscribe button, like his videos, comment, let him know you're out there supporting him. These guys put a lot of work into their videos to entertain you guys, so show him a little bit of love. Let them know we sent you. Okay, it's time for your tractor news of the week. We have one piece of important news for you this week, but it is something you want to listen to. A lot of you guys have these older tractors without that ROP system, that rollover protection system. I think it's 1985 and earlier. This is going to apply to you. Now there is a program in Iowa called, wait for it, Iowa Center for Agricultural Safety and Health I dash cash, okay, that is partnering with the National ROPS Rebate Program. And so what the ROPS Rebate Program does is they will subsidize up to 70% of the cost of a ROPS system. So if you have an older tractor, I don't know, a Ford 8N or 9N, for example, you can reach out to this program. They are working actively in New York and in Iowa with a little bit of limited exposure in other states as well. Looks like they're trying to grow the program, but the focus of their program is to add on ROPS systems, these rollover over protection systems along with seat belts to make older tractors a lot safer, prevent accidents, injury, death from occurring. So if you are in that kind of a situation, in particular New York or Iowa, check them out, the National ROPS Rebate Program. That is a huge deal. And if you can get up to 70% off of adding that safety feature onto your older tractor, that is worth looking into. Alrighty guys, it is time for our swag winner of the week. Again, we are gonna give away whatever we can round up around here. That could be pens, stickers, hats, shirts, whatever we can and fine we're going to pack it up and send it your way how we select the winner it's really easy you have to leave a comment down below from the week's previous video whoever has the most liked comment is going to be the winner it's very simple right so congratulations to this week's winner if you want to participate leave that comment this week we'll see who wins next that is going to do it for us this week again we need your support if you have something that everybody else should know about Send us an email at tractortalk at goodworkstractors.com. If you want to see more, subscribe below. Check us out at goodworkstractors.com. We'd love to sell you an attachment. We're going to close it out today with a video from Mike. He has a John Deere 5075E, has one of our HLA 3500 series pushers on his tractor, doing some nighttime snow pushing. A beautiful video, a good way to end it. Thanks for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.